guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you how I put together this outdoor space on a budget. Now it does require a little bit of sawing, but if you buy your wood at Lowe's, they will cut it for you. So, if you want to know how to make this beautiful space, stick around. I'll show you how. Thanks for watching. And be sure to give me a like because it really helps my channel. Thank you so much. Okay, I kind of went through my stuff and found things that I could already use that were at my house, but I had to pick up a few supplies, and I'm getting these 4x4 four four, um, posts, and I'm not using pressure treated because I'm going to paint and seal them. And then I had these cinder blocks already sitting behind my house, and I'm going to go ahead and use those. Okay, next, just to clean those off, I'm just going to take an air compressor, and I'm just going to blow all the debris off of them. Now, you could take a brush on this as well if you want to. I just didn't want to get them wet because I was going to paint them, and I didn't want to seal in the moisture. Okay, so I'm going to use four cinder blocks for each side. I'm going to attach them with liquid nail, and I'm going to use one two-inch cinder block for the front base for the seating area. So the two for the back are going to be for my backrest, and two for the front are going to be for my seating area. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid nail down the center of them. You don't want to put too much because you don't want it oozing out really bad. But just kind of go in zigzag uh, motion on this because you want to make sure you get enough on there. But this stuff really held on good. I was surprised when I picked it up, it actually did not come apart. But you want to make sure that you do get it straight and even because you want both of your sides to match. And when you put the back up there to it, you want to make sure it does um, line up. And I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid nail on the um, sides just to match up with the bottom. And then you want to clamp it. So be sure and clamp it after you get it straight. And you want to make sure that you clamp the front and the back. And then I'm adding one more on top because I decided I was going to put an armrest on it. So you're actually going to use five of these per side. And I had a bunch of these because I used them for um, shelving unit in my barn. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and glue the two pieces on the back. I'm just going to go ahead and glue right on top of here. And I'm going to let these dry really good before I move them and glue them to the, to the front part. And then for the opposite side, I'm going to mirror it exactly. I'm going to make it exactly like the opposite side so that they can connect together. This was a pretty inexpensive way to put together an outdoor space. These center blocks don't cost very much, and you can paint them every year, or you can paint them every few years. You know, they, they're going to hold up. Then to make it level, we ended up adding another one of the cinder blocks, kind of lining it up exactly where I want it, because these get heavy, and you kind of want to make sure that they're going to stay where you want them. And then we're just adding another block to the bottom of this, just like the one we had on the bottom, because we wanted it to be a little bit more level. And then we had to cut one of the center blocks in half to butt up against the back so that we can make the back rest a little bit higher, too. This just kind of leveled it out because the opposite side, it kind of sits on an incline, and you want it to be as straight as you can get it. And I'm just going to go ahead and put glue down this side, kind of a little bit lower to where the back rest goes, and on the bottom and attach this, too. Now, this took a couple of us to do this because it starts getting heavier as you add to these but you want to go ahead and brace them I, I'm, I'm just telling you for sure bracing them is what you want to do now if you don't have a bunch of braces you could do this in steps you could do um, two together and then come back and do more but go ahead and brace it and then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the opposite side and we didn't have to add any to the bottom of this one because it was on the upside of the incline okay now I'm gonna put all my boards up here together because I want to make sure that I get one mark line all the way through on all of them. And I'm going to hang these over three and a half inches on each side. And I'm just going to cut these with a miter saw. And I'm going to go ahead and do my measurement one last time because I want to make sure that I measure twice, cut once, just to make sure that I am cutting it exactly where I wanted it. Then I'm just going to take them outside. I'm going to put them on. I put them on these sawhorses, and I'm just going to use a palm sander just to sand them. I'm just going to kind of flip them and sand all four sides. Just you didn't have to be perfect, but just kind of get them as you know smooth as you can. These are a little bit rough pieces. 
And then I'm just going to stain them with a special walnut and I'm going to stain all four sides. And after it dries, I'm just using a rag, just a cotton rag to stain these. And then after it completely dries, I'm going to come back in with a clear um, sealer just to seal them up because I did not get the pressure treated wood. To paint them, I'm going to paint the inside of them with the black um, Krylon spray paint. And then I bought um, mortar and stone paint to paint the rest of them because it was a little bit cheaper. You just spend the money on um, spray cans to spray the inside of all those. It would have cost a lot, but I couldn't get to those areas as well, so I did um, use spray paint in those. And I'm just going to roll this on with a roller. And it really didn't take that much paint. I could have actually started with just a quart and had plenty to do this entire project. And then I'm going to paint three more of these for my side table and my coffee table. And I'm using whatever paint I have now left over. I had some black that I'm going to use on these. So now we're going to start assembling it and we did have to put some shims underneath it to kind of shim it up a little bit because it wasn't 100% level. But we just put those wood shims underneath here and that worked perfect. And now we're putting in the wood. Just slide it right on through there. Is this, this was a pretty easy project actually. And then I'm hanging it out three and a half inches on each side, just kind of making sure the first one's um, straight, and then I can come back in and get all the rest of them straight too. Okay, next I'm just going to measure my bench area because I did get a piece of um, 16 inch wide wood, a flat wood, and I'm just going to go ahead and um, cut it and put it on there so it's a little bit more comfortable to set on. Okay, then I'm going to test fit it real quick just to make sure it does fit in the space before I go through the time to sand it and stain it. And I'm just going to sand it with a palm sander and then I'm going to stain it with that same special walnut. And I'm going to do the sides with the special walnut as well. I'm not going to add any extra trim onto the sides or anything like that. I'm just using the piece of wood and it was fine. It worked out good. And then I'm just going to attach that with the same liquid nail that I used on the concrete. The whole project was put together with liquid nail. This stuff really does hold up good. So if you're doing a project where you want it to really last, use the liquid nail. Okay, and to make a side table, I just got some special walnut stain. And I'm just going to stain that disc that I got at Lowe's. And I'm just going to attach it with the same liquid nail. And I'm going to center it right on top. This is an easy way to make just a sag table that's pretty inexpensive for your outdoor space. And then I'm going to put some other wood on top of it just to kind of hold it down while it dries. Okay, for my coffee table, I just took two of those same 4x4s and I just cut them shorter. And I'm going to put those through two more of the black cinder blocks that I painted. And then I'm going to go ahead and stain it after I sanded it. And then I got a tabletop for the top of it. I'm just getting a piece of plywood for the... And then I'm just going to sand it, stain it, and then I am going to seal it with a sealer. You want to make sure that you do put a sealer on it. I'm just using a polyurethane sealer from Minwax on all of my pieces. To assemble them, I'm just going to take two of the black cinder blocks and I'm going to face them to each other. Then I'm going to do a lot of measurements before I actually put my top on it. And once I get, did get my top on it exactly where I wanted it, I did take a pencil and draw a square around each one of those little um, blocks. So I knew exactly where to put it back on once I got it measured out right. And then I'm just going to put one in top and one in bottom. And I'm going to hang it out exactly the same length I did for my um, bench so that it does blend with it. Okay, and then that's the side that I drew the um, where I'm going to lay it out on so I can see it when I actually get the liquid nail on it. And again, I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm just going to use the liquid nail again, and I'm just going to attach the tabletop. Now, after we got done doing this, because we had to move the table a little bit, it really wasn't as heavy as I thought it was going to be, and it does stay together really well. I mean, we just lifted it from the tabletop itself. And then I'm just going to add some weight to the top of it to hold it in place and just let it dry. This was a pretty budget friendly project. And then I bought two really large ferns. They were on clearance for $10 a piece and I just put those into pots that I already had. Now 
actual cost that I spent on everything to make this space for a bench, a coffee table, and a side table, and some fern. I thought this came in pretty good at $296, and it's an excellent place to relax. If you like these kind of videos, be sure and give me a like. If you want to see future videos, be sure and subscribe and ring that bell to be notified when I have a new video upload. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.